Another video for Kings of War, and this time we are on about the Empire of Dust. Not the undead, sort of, but to the Empire of Dust, the Inge Egyptian sort of deserty themed Kings of War army. Now, what is his name? Aphidia um, was named after from what I gather, one of the um, god beings in the god war. Aphidia has some sort of connection to the Night Stalkers and he helped create them, of want of a better term. So yeah, um, thanks to him all of the people of the Empire of Dust are undead and they just they're just evil so let's begin so in the big book on page 333 is the army special upgrade and it is the casket of the damned the souls of the damned are released from the prison to drive the unit forward towards its foe Mark a unit that has a casket of soul with an appropriate model. Once per game, when this unit is targeted by a surge spell, you may roll an additional six dice, which count towards the total surge result. This must be declared before rolling any dice for the spell. This unit's casket of the damned is then destroyed and cannot be used for the remainder of the game. So basically, this kind of suggests you want to take a load of spellcasters that can surge and because it's got some similar sort of aspects that the undead army has there's going to be a fair few surges so the infantry then starting on page 333 skeleton warriors speed 5 melee 5 plus defense 4 plus Troop, 10 attacks, nerve, dash 11, 55 points. You'll notice a lot of stuff in this force are fearless. Not everything, but a lot of it. Uh, regiment, 12 attacks, nerve, dash 15, 85 points. Horde, 25 attacks, nerve, dash 22, 140 points. Leaf Lodge 1, shambling, and they've got a casket, and they can take a casket of the damned for 10 points. I would hold them out because the number of attacks and the nerve is brilliant the hitting on fires and which isn't great but the amount of attacks they're gonna hit a few things and they've got leech life one which really does help plus they've got speed five and if you get a casket get damned you will charge them into something and you really will skeleton spearmen then Speed 5, melee 5+, plus, defense 4+. Plus. Troop, 12 attacks, nerve, dash 11, 70 points. Regiment, 15 attacks, nerve, dash 15, 105 points. Horde, 30 attacks, nerve, dash 22, 175 points. They've got Leech Life 1, Phalanx and Shambling and Ting, and can take a Casket of Souls for 10 points. Um, What's the points difference here? For a troop, it's 15 points. For a regiment, it's 20 points, and for a horde, it's 35 points different. Um, main reason being you've got about three to five more attacks, and you've got phalanx. Um, skeleton spearmen are a bit better, but if you want something really cheap, skeleton warriors are still pretty good. Revenants, then speed five, melee four plus, defense four plus. Troop 10 attacks, nerve dash 13, 80 points. Regiment 12 attacks, nerve dash 17, 125 points. Horde 25 attacks, nerve dash 24, 205 points. Crusher strength 1, leech life 1, shambling and can take a casket of souls for 10 points. So yeah, these are kind of like the elite infantry of the um, Empire of Dust. 
obviously the defence is still a bit meek considering and they've got shambling but they hit a bit better than the skeletons they got better nerve values by one or two depending on which one you take and they've got crushing strength one which is always good finally then for the infantry we've got the mummies speed five defense four sorry speed five melee four plus defense five troop 10 attacks nerve dash 14 115 points Regiment, 12 attacks, Nerve, Dash 18, 180 points. Crush Strength 2, Leech Life 1, Regeneration 5 plush and Shambling. And can take Casket of the Damned for 10 points. Um, mummies are slightly expensive, but they get the job done. They've got Crushing Strength 2 and Regeneration. The thing is with the mummies, they are the powerfulest of the basic infantry, but they are the most expensive. That's kind of the trade-off you get in the skirt. The Skeleton Warriors, I'd probably just get rid of the Skeleton Warriors and just go for Skeleton Spearmen because at least we've got Phalanx, so if Cavalry and whatnot charge you, good. Um, Revenants, if you want something in between the Skeleton Spearmen and the Mummies, Revenants ain't bad either. They're, they're not expensive, I don't think. Plus you can hold them out. The Mummies, you can only go up to a Regiment, which with a nerve of... Dash 18 is nothing to nothing, nothing to cry about. It's pretty good. Ranged infantry then on page 333. Skeleton archers, which are irregular. Speed 5, melee 6 plus, range 5 plus, defense 3. Troop, 8 attacks, nerve, dash 11, 70 points. Regiment, 10 attacks, nerve, dash 15, 95 points. Horde, 20 attacks, nerve, Dash 22, 165 points. Leech Life 1, Shambling, and they've got bows. Personally, I'd hold them out. The amount of attacks they're getting at range 5, you ain't going to hit that much. So I, I'd just hold them out because 20 attacks, you're going to still get a few hitting, I'd say. The thing is, though, I probably wouldn't take them in general because hitting on 5s... Um, Leech Life only works in close combat. I I just won't bother with them to be honest. Skeleton Dead Eye Crossbows, which are also irregular. Speed 5, melee 6 plus, defense 5, 3 plus, range 5 plus. Troop 8 attacks, nerve dash 11, a 90 points. Regiment 10 attacks, nerve dash 15, 120 points. The Leech Life 1, shambling, and they've got crossbows, which are 24 inch range. Elite at range, piercing 1, pot shot. So if you move and shoot with them, it's plus two. So you need sixes and you half your attacks, which you need sixes as well. Um, I'd honestly go for the Dead Eye Crossbowmen because they got piercing and elite on their on their ranged attacks. The skeleton archers do not. Yes, I said hold them out, but. Considering they haven't got any um, defense, anti-defensive stuff like piercing and whatnot, you might as well. Um, I'd take them as a regiment. Take them. I'd take the um, crossbows as a regiment. Take them as a troop. Just seems too sh too small. Cavalry then on page three hundred and thirty-four. Revenant Cavalry, speed 8, melee 4 plus, defense 5 plus. Troop, 8 attacks, nerve dash 14, 105 points. Regiment, 16 attacks, nerve dash 17, 165 points. Leech Life 1, Shambling, Thunderous Charge 2. These are kind of like your heavy cavalry for most other armies. They are slightly better in, in most respects, apart from they hitting on 4s rather than 3s. Most heavy cavalry are hitting on 3s. And the Shambling, most heavy cavalry for most armies, hang got Shambling. That's only a downside if you really want to move at the double. If you're charging, not much of a problem. They've also got a fair bit more nerve than most um, cavalry I've noticed. Most heavy cavalry haven't got um, um, nerve of, of 17 to be routed. Which in itself is brilliant. Its main downside of them... They're shambling because of the army, and they haven't got any crushing strength, so they may 
there for outflanking. So you are going to have to surge with them to get the most out of them. Next we have the Skeleton Archer Cavalry, which are irregular. Speed 9, melee 4+, plus, range 5+, plus, defense 3+. Plus. Troop, 7 attacks, nerve, dash 12, 100 points. Regiment, 14 attacks, nerve, dash 15, 155 points. Leech life 1, nimble, shambling, and we've got short bows which are 18 inch range and steady aim. Um, I take these over both of the um, infantry ranged stuff because this has got good defense, good uh, movement, should I say, and they can move and shoot with the short bows and no penalty. Yes, they can't move at the double, but speed 9 with 18-inch uh, range bows, you're technically getting a 27-inch range shoot, which isn't bad. I would take them as a regiment because hitting on fives as a troop with seven attacks you're not going to hit that often with 14 attacks chances are you'll hit with a fair few the swarms then on page 334 desert swarm which is irregular speed six melee five plus defense two regiment nine attacks nerve dash 12 60 points horde 18 attacks nerve dash it 15 100 points leech life scout and uh, leech life one sorry scout and shambling i'd probably take them as a horde if i had to take them because the amount of attacks and the nerve is is a lot better for the points um but it it seems a bit in there i mean scout does help but they they still shambling which is its main problem the scavengers then which are also a regular speed 10 melee 5 plus defense 4 plus Regiment, 9 attacks, Nerve, 11, 13, 90 points. Horde, 18 attacks, Nerve, 14, 16, 150 points. They've got Fly, Leech Life 2 and Nimble. I suppose it's kind of like um, a swarm of um, Scarab Beetles, that sort of thing. For them, I take them over the Desert Swarm because Leech Life 2 is pretty good. They've got Defense 4, which does help a lot. They can also fly and they're not shambling so they've got some outflanking potential chariots then on page 334 there's only one and they are the revenant chariots they are irregular speed 8 melee 4 plus range 5 plus defense 4 plus troop 8 attacks nerve dash 14 120 points regiment 12 attacks nerve dash 16 150 points Horde, 16 attacks, Nerve, dash 18, 190 points. Legion, 20, 20 attacks, Nerve, dash 22, 220 points. Leech Life 1, Shambling, Thunder Charge 2, and they've got Short Bows, which are 18 inch range, you've got Steady Aim. A Troop have got 4 attacks, a Regiment has got 6 attacks, a Horde has got 8 attacks, and the Legion has got 10 attacks, and they're with the Bows. Um, I would either horde or legion them out the amount of attacks and the nerve seriously get good around there um, I wouldn't use them for shooting even though it's an option I'd use them just to charge in um, obviously on the flank if necessary so you're going to have to get that surging off but if you can't I mean thunder's charge 2 with leech life 1 it's not bad large infantry then on page 335 enslaved guardians spellcaster rank zero speed six melee three plus defense five plus regiment nine attacks nerve dash 14 135 points horde 18 attacks nerve dash 17 225 points crush and shrink two leech life one shambling uh, you can give them wind blast five for 20 points and a casket of the damned for 10 points i'd give them a casket of the damned because They've got crushing strength, two in each life, one with the amount of attacks and the nerve. It's a no-brainer. Um, having them as a regiment a whore or a horde isn't bad. Um, yes, it's lesser if you take them as a regiment, but if you take multiples in regiments, you've got more for your opponent to worry about, which is all good. Finally, for the large infantry, we've got the enslaved guardian archers. Speed 6, melee 4+, plus, defense 5+, plus, 
defense 4 plus range 5 plus regiment 9 attacks nerve dash 14 140 points horde 18 attacks nerve dash 17 235 points Cushion Strength 1, Leech Life 1, Shambling Heavy Crossbows, which are 13th range, Piercing 2, and Pot Shot. And you can take a casket of the dam for 10 points. These are bad. They're not amazing, but they're not bad. Um, 9 attacks or 18 attacks with a horde. Um, I'd probably take them as a regiment. Reason being is the points still aren't bad. You're basically taking a slightly expensive war machine but with slightly better defense and you're not tripling your attacks against them um they're still not bad in combat hitting on fours crush and trank one and leech laugh one with nine attacks or 18 attacks they're still not bad monsters then on page 335 bone giant and considering what we've seen of giant so far i would have thought that would have been a titan, but never mind. Speed 7, melee 4 plus, defense 5 plus. Attacks d6 plus 6, nerve dash 18, 190 points. Brutal, crush and strength 3, leech life 1, shambling and strider. Um, yeah, I'd, surely it's a titan with the stats it's got. Um, I think it's pretty decent. The points cost is a bit cheap. Yes, it's got shambling, but at speed 7, that's not going to matter too much. Um, nerve of dash 18, crush strength 3, and brutal, and leech life 1, it, it is powerful. I'd have thought it'd be about 220 points, but, you know, I think, I think it's pretty decent. Reanimated Behemoth, it's a chariot monster, spellcaster rank 0, speed 6, melee 4 plus, defense 6 plus. 9 attacks, nerve, dash 16, 190 points. Christian strength 2, leech life 1, shambling and strider. Can take drain life 6 for 30 points. Eh, maybe take that. That way you can um, wound people and heal, heal other people. Maybe it's good putting it near some of your infantry units or your enslaved guardians or some of your big beasties. Have it um, drain life on someone. The thing is, um, do you want your dedicated 9 attacks rather than 6 plus, maybe 9, maybe 12? Um, the nerve's a bit less than the Bone Giant, yes, and its crush strength isn't as good. But you've got Drain Life on the Behemoth and its Defence 6, which always counts for something. Um, either are good, it's just a case of do you want something that's got some support option, go for the behemoth. Do you want something that's just all out there to punch things, go for the bone giant. So the titans on page 335. Starting with a monolith and you can only have one of these in your army. Titan spellcaster ring 0. Speed 5, defense 5. One attack. Sorry, no, no attacks on this one. Uh, nerve, dash 17, 120 points. Inspiring. And you can't have a base size bigger than 75 times 70. Basically, you can't have a base bigger than 75 mil. Monolith, as long as this unit is alive and in play on the table, at the start of each range phase, you may immediately cast Surge 8 on a friendly core unit anywhere within 24 inch of this unit, regardless of line of sight. The monolith cannot... The monolith cannot be disordered. So basically what you, you want to do is hide it at the back and surge stuff forward. It's a good job you can only take one of these in your force because can you imagine how many of these you could take? So yeah you could you I mean there's only really a few heroes and the scavengers you can't use it on Everything else is fair game. So the Bone Giant, the Revenant Cavalry, the Revenant Chariots, the Reanimated Behemoth, the Enslaved Guardians, uh, Mummies. You have got so much choice of what you want to use it on. Um, if you're able to get a model that makes sense for it, take it. Just, yeah. 
because if I were doing Empire of Dust, I would take one. No argument. The Undead Worm. Speed 10, melee 4, defense 4. 10 attacks, nerve dash 18, 215 points. Crush strength 3, fly, leech life 1, nimble and shambling. Um, I'd have thought it'd be leech life 2 or have some sort of range attack, but oh well. Um, speed 10, yes it's shambling, but speed 10, you're still going to get somewhere. Nerve dash 18 or 10 attacks and crush strength 3. It's a dragony thing. It's going to be good. Next we have the War Engines on page 336. We've got the Bellfire Catapult. Speed 5, Defense 4, Range 5 plus. 2 attacks, Nerve dash 11, 95 points. Shambling and its range attack is 48 inch range. Blast D3 plus 1, ignores cover, indirect piercing 2 and reload. Unholy Flames. Whenever this unit rolls to damage, it's with its bell fire attack, which is the ranged attack, what it's called, it can re-roll D3 of that dice that fell to damage. That's not bad. Um, two attacks, so minimum of one, one hit scored. Maximum of... Um, maximum of... Eight. So, it's not bad. 95 points ain't that expensive what it does. So, yeah, it's not a bad option. The Soul Snare, then. You can only take one of these in your force. Spellcaster rank, zero. Speed five, defense, four. Um, no attacks. <laughs> Nerve, dash, 15. 150 points. He's got stealthy. Drain life, nine. Soul Snare. This unit's drain life spell has a range of 18. You may also target friendly units within 12 inch instead of 6 inch for the, for the damage removal component. Which is pretty decent. This means you can heal people with a great distance. It's going to be ridiculous on mummies because they've already got regeneration. Um, on monsters it's, it's really powerful. Um, buh, buh, buh. What else have we got? The monolith. Um, yeah, maybe, but if you're casting it on that, um, something's gone wrong, I feel. Um, again, it's it's something I always take in my army. It might seem a bit weak in terms of its offensive capabilities. Because it's got no attacks and no proper rate, no proper range thing. But the drain life of nine with an eighteen inch range, and you can move and shoot with it for crying out loud. So it's got technically a range of twenty three inch. So that's not bad. And you've got twelve inch on healing people if you're scoring hits with their drain life, which again is brilliant. The heroes then on page. 336 Undead Army Standard Bearer which is an infantry hero speed 5, melee 5 plus, defense 4 plus 1 attack, nerve dash 11, 50 points individual inspiring leech life 1 mount on an undead horse increasing speed to 8 and changing to hero cavalry for 25 points Um, yeah maybe it's an undead standard bearer it's just got a flag of summit. Um, at least it's not shambling. Um, other than that, no. It's 50 points you can use better elsewhere. A new might pharaoh on roll chariot. It's a hero chariot. Surprise, surprise. Spellcaster rank 2. Speed 8, melee 3 plus, defense 5 plus. 7 attacks, nerve dash 16, 205 points. Reg Christian Strength 2, Inspiring, Leech Life 1, Nimble, Regeneration 5+, plus, Thunderous Charge 1. Can take Surge 8 for 30 points. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. 7 attacks with Christian Strength 2, Thunderous Charge 1. Hitting on 3s, you're getting somewhere with it. Regeneration 5+, plus, it can also take the option to Surge, which, considering it's height 3, you are going to be able to see a fair bit. And also... 
if there's some monsters nearby, use it on them. So, yeah, I'll, I'll probably consider it. I'll probably consider it. The Revenant Champion, then. Speed 5, it's a hero infantry. Speed 5, melee 4 plus, defense 5. 4 attacks, nerve, dash 14, 65 points. Crusher Strength 1, individual, inspiring, Revenant only. So, that's things such as the Revenants, the, the Revenant Chariots, the Revenant Cavalry, and I think that's about it. So, uh, you can mount on an undead horse, increase in speed to 18, chain cavalry for 25 points. Um, that makes it 18, 90 points. Um, if you like, I'm fine, but same response as the army standard bearer just now. The Anum Knight Pharaoh. He's a hero infantry, spellcaster rank 2. Speed 5, melee 3 plus, defense 6 plus. 5 attacks, nerve, dash 16, 160 points. Cushion strength 2, individual, inspiring, lead life 1, mighty, regeneration 5 plus. And it's got surge 8. Uh, Eternal Guard, and you can only take one of these in your army. Aura, Elite, Melee, Mummies only. Yeah. For 20 points, this unique upgrade cannot be taken in addition to a magical artifact. Though I suppose if you're taking Mummies, it's not bad to take. Um, he's a bit expensive for a road hump, to be honest. Um, unlike the Pharaoh on Royal Chariot, you're not doubling or tripling your attacks if you get a charge on the flank or rear. So, them extra 40 points could be spent on the Pharaoh on the chariot, and you'd be better off. The Cursed High Priest. Speed 5, melee 5 plus, defense 4 plus. One attack, nerve, dash 13, 85 points. Individual and inspiring. Reanimate it when targeting a friendly core skeleton unit. This unit can re-roll up to two of the dice that failed to hit with heal and surge. Not bad. So that would affect um, the Bellfire Catapult, the um, b -b -b Skeleton Warrior, Skeleton Spearmen, the Revenants, the Skeleton Archers, the Crossbowmen, both versions of the Cavalry, uh, the Revenant Chariots, the Bone Giant, the reanimated behemoth, believe it or not, and the undead worm, believe it or not. Um, which ain't bad. Mount on undead horse, increase in speed to 8 and change into your cavalry for 25 points. I would suggest doing that, making it 110 points. Expensive, but I would do that. So you can take a load of spells and you're going to have to take a few to, for it to be worth it. Drain Life 7 for 35 points, maybe. Fireball 12 for 35 points. Fireball 12 is pretty decent, pretty decent. Heal 5 for 35 points, maybe. Uh, Hex 3 for 15 points. Mm. Surge 8 for 30 points, probably so. Weakness 3 for 20 points, maybe. Windblast 6 for 25 points, no, because... If you're casting Windblast, surely that's going the opposite of what you're trying to do with them. You want to get closer to them, not make them go further away from you. Um, heal, Surge or Fireball are your best options, I'd say, there. Though Hex and Weakness, there are points of taking both of them, or either of them, should I say. But Heal... Heal, Surge, or Fireball are my choices, if it was me. Revenant King on Undead Great Flying Room. It's a Hero Titan. Spellcaster rank 0. Speed 10, melee 4+, plus, defense 5+. Plus. 10 attacks, nerve dash 19, 100 and, sorry, 250 points. Ain't cheap. Cushion Strength 3, Fly, Inspiring, Leech Life 1, and Nimble. Gain the ranged attack, Plague Breath, 12 inch, range 4, Sorry, hitting on fours. Stealthy. Sorry, step. Start that one again. Gain the ranged attack, Plague Breath, which has got 12 inch range. Hits on fours. Steady aim for 15 points. Yeah, maybe it's not bad. Um, surge eight for 15 points. 
maybe take the surge. I mean, that's making it 280 points. That's still not bad. I mean, it's a Titan. It's a hero Titan on the drag, dragony thing, so why not? Um, like I said, surge is king here, so that's not a bad option. Uh, Plague Bless, not breath isn't bad either, considering you've got steady aim and it's 10 attacks. It, it's it's alright, but you can find better elsewhere. I mean, for... For more put for 20 more points, you're getting fireball 12 on the cursed high priest, but then again, it, it's not good defensive wise. So, swings and roundabouts, swings and roundabouts. Revenant King on King on Undead, great flying worm, still pretty good. Revenant on Undead, great boring worm, speed 7, melee 4 plus, defense 5 plus, 12 attacks, nerve dash 18. 220 points. Brutal, Crushing Strength 3, Leech Life 1, and Strider. Gain the range attack Plague Breath, which is 12 inch range. Hits on 4s, steady aim for 15 points. Maybe, I mean, it's got 12 attacks on that, so that's not a bad thing. Um, you base, Basically, do you want a more offensive option? Go for the Burrowing Worm. Do you want something that's got a bit of speed to it and can do a bit of support and has got slightly better nerve? Go for the Flying Worm. Unique units on page 337. I'm going to butcher this name, I tell you. Apapathosis, Champion of Death. He's a hero titan, spellcaster rank 0. Speed 10, melee 3 plus, defense 5 plus. 10 attacks, nerve, dash 19, 360 points. He's pretty expensive. Cloak of Death, Christian Rank 3, Fly, Leech Life 1, Nimble, very inspiring. Yeah. Wings, w sorry, Winds of Death. Whenever this unit rolls to hit with Drain Life or Surge, it can re-roll all dice that scored a natural unmodified one. Not bad. Uh, drain Life 7 and Surge 8. Which, I don't know, it's supposed to be like, a um, Revenant King or a Cursed High Priest on a giant worm. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be, or it's supposed to be like, <coughs> or it's supposed to be like some um, giant floating entity that can hit things and um, um, cast spells as well. I don't know if it's one of those three things, but um, he's pretty good. <laughs> Christian Strength 3. The Cloak of Death is a ridiculous ability, which does, if I just look through the book, uh, Cloak of Death, uh, units can only be damaged uh, in the movement phase after this unit has completed its order. All enemy units within 6 inches of this unit take an immediate point of damage. Units can only be damaged by a single source of Cloak of Death per turn. No nerve test is required for damage taken by Cloak of Death. So at least it's it's still extra damage. It's still extra damage. Plus, if you cast Drain Life, that's always helpful. <laughs> so we've also got the Idol of Shabuk. It's a monster hero, spellcaster rank zero, speed seven, melee three plus, defense six plus. Uh, 10 attacks, nerve, dash 18, 290 points. It's not cheap, but it's still a bit cheaper than a Apophitis. Aura, Iron Resolve, Cushion Rank 3, Leech Life 1, Shambling Strider, very inspiring, and it's got heal 5. Ah. Um, I don't know what it'd be. Would it be a Bone Giant, perhaps, do you think? Um, I think it's still pretty good. The thing with this is... It's not it's not as um, supportive in the fact it hasn't got surge or drain life, but it's got it's got um, I'm resolve aura which uh, and heal five. I suppose it has got some um, and they're inspiring. So I suppose it has got some um, support options. Um, it's got strider as well, which I suppose helps. So. The unique units, unlike a lot of armies, are really, really decent. There's are usually a few that's a bit alright and some that's a bit eh, but I think both of them are really, really good.
The thing what you want to take note of is that shambling is king. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You want to take a few heroes that have got shambling. Be it your cursed high priest, be it your pharaohs. Be it any of the characters. Um, b -b -b what else? Um, be it the monolith. You want as much surging as possible. Get things as close to the enemy as possible. And the thing is, if you have a lot of surge going off, you can end up being way, way faster than pretty much any army it going and if you surge close enough to the enemy you count as charging them and most and everything's got surge has got surge eight which means chances are you'll get at least another four inch off if not more so yeah the main weaknesses of the um empire of dust is obviously the shambling so it's a bit meh um infantry defense wise also is a bit negligible unless you start going for the more expensive stuff the cavalry is also a bit sloppy but that's until you get surging once you get surging they become phenomenal it's just with everything everything and that is another main weakness if you knock the people with surge out this army is going to struggle for me it's not a starter army but for someone who want something that feels a lot different to a lot of other forces out there and can and has got a lot of fearless that's another strength nothing can be waved in this force I don't think um, the, brr, there's only there's only one thing in the entire force that can be wavered and that's the scavengers. Everything else is fearless which is helping a lot. So yeah, wouldn't recommend them for your first army but I would recommend them as an army for people who know how to play perhaps an undead force from another game or for someone who wants a bit of a challenge. So with that, goodbye for now.